underrated places you must visit in Italy. Millions of tourists visit Italy's famous and iconic landmarks every day. Although those are undoubtedly worth seeing, you may be searching for some hidden treasures that are just as worthwhile to see but may not be as well known or evident as the others. Welcome to Best Wonders, where today we'll be showing you some underrated places you must visit in Italy. But before we continue, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you get more videos like this. Now, let's move on to the video. Number 10. The Hot Springs of Saturnia One of the remarkable natural beauties of the Tuscan countryside is Saturnia Hot Springs, also known as Terme di Saturnia, or Cascade di Molino in Italian. Natural pools of warm water surrounded by travertine stone provide the ideal setting for admiring the wonders of nature and unwinding for tourists. You can easily rent a car in either of those cities and make a day trip to Saturnia, a small town in the Maremma region in Italy, which is known for its incredible blue water hot springs. However, staying overnight is recommended so you can truly experience the serenity of these springs. It's only a two-hour drive from Siena or a three-hour drive from Rome. Number 9. Paso Gardena The Gardena Pass, also known as the Paso Gardena, is a stunning pass through the western Dolomites. It is situated in the province of South Tyrol in northeastern Italy and is a lovely place to visit throughout the year. It is a great place to watch the sunset, enjoy scenic overlooks, or go hiking. If you can visit during the winter months, you can take advantage of the views of the snow-capped peaks and engage in winter sports, including skiing. In fact, the Men's World Cup Winter Games were held there, so you know the ski trails you can experience here are world-class. Number 8. Procida The island of Procida is sometimes disregarded by tourists due to its proximity to Capri despite the fact that it is much more worthwhile to visit than the more well-known islands. Procida gives off a friendlier vibe. If you're interested in visiting this quaint fishing village, you can take the ferry from Naples, which takes about 30 minutes. Once you arrive, you can take in the colorful buildings as you explore and become immersed in the small community. The view over Marina de Coricella is one of the area's highlights, but make sure you stay one or two nights in Procida so you can take advantage of everything it has to offer. The island between Ischia and Capri may be the best known feature of Procida, a little piece of land in the Bay of Naples. However, it was selected as Italy's capital of culture for 2022 in January, besting nine other finalists, a mixture of cities and small towns, and becoming the only island to ever receive the honor. Number 7. Civita di Bagnoreggio The neighborhood of Civita di Bagnoreggio, a suburb of Bagnoreggio, is distinguished for its breathtaking setting overlooking the Tiber River Valley and is only reachable by a narrow footbridge. Although this town is magical and secure, its location has created problems due to erosion and potential foundational instability because of this. Civita di Bagnoreggio is known as the dying city. But even though there isn't a pressing threat that it will vanish anytime soon, visiting the town and seeing it as it is today is a worthwhile experience because its appearance may change in the future due to the erosion. Civita di Bagnoreggio has maintained its medieval appearance despite having such a small population and neither the ability nor the desire to modernize. The saint and philosopher Bonaventure was a native of the city and its most well-known resident. The study involves careful observation, a stunning day excursion to experience Italy without the tourist traps and post-war palazzos, a great glimpse of rural life and the resilient and tenacious villagers left defending the fort. Number 6. San Fruttuoso The largest beach in the area is located in this quaint Italian riverside town. Stroll along the pebbled sand and be amazed by the clear waters of its well-known beach. 
follow the small tunnel path to the town's main streets to get to the other side of the tunnel. There are narrow stairs. The abbey is steeped in history. This historic site contains everything from a pirate gun to a palace. The beach is exclusive and is only accessible by ferry from the town. St. Fructuosus, a 3rd century bishop of Taraco, which is the modern-day Tarragona in northeastern Spain, was martyred as a result of Valerian's persecutions. He is honored at the abbey. The remains of Fructuosus were brought here by Greek monks in the 9th century. St. Fructuosus' ashes are still kept at the abbey. Number 5. Brisighella Northeastern Italy's province of Ravenna is where the little municipality of Brisighella is situated. Known for its breathtaking panoramic views, beautiful churches, impressive castles, and other architectural wonders, this town is worth spending a night or two in. There are also a number of well-known clock towers in the area as well as numerous viewpoints along the way that provide breathtaking views of Brisighella and the surrounding hills. There are several hiking trails in the area that will provide you with stunning views and an exciting opportunity to experience the countryside. Number 4. Albero Bello It is possible to visit Albero Bello today to see these structures in person and you can even step inside some of them because they have been converted into museums or are simply noted as unique trulos. These white round structures that are topped with gray conical roofs were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996 and have been one of the main draws of the region. At first impression, Albero Bello appears to be a typical tiny Italian village. There are white homes, narrow and uphill streets, beautiful weather, and a leisurely pace of life. However, if you look closely at some of the homes, you might assume that you've stumbled into a fantasy novel. You are surrounded by numerous little cottages with conical roofs. Number 3. Rapallo There are many places in Rapallo where you can grab a delicious seafood meal and enjoy it while soaking up the atmosphere that the town has to offer. The buildings are notable for their vibrant colors and unique designs. Rapallo is a small town on the Italian Riviera. If you want to visit a relaxing seaside town that feels like a resort, this is the place to go. Older Italian families strolling down the promenade or relaxing on a beach with a gelato and taking in the vista give Rapallo a laid-back coastal vacation ambience. Number 2. Matera the ancient town of Sassi di Matera, whose homes are believed to be some of the first in what is now Italy, is one of the most incredible places to visit in Matera. Matera is a village in the Italian region of Basilicata. It is well known for its distinctive cave-like structures made from limestone. Once an ancient settlement in Jordan, Matera has been continuously inhabited for more than 30,000 years. You'll spend a lot of times in caverns in Matera, Italy, sleeping, eating, enjoying an aperitivo, and even viewing contemporary sculpture may all be done in caves. The historic neighborhoods, or Sassi, are a collection of limestone grottos perched precariously on the side of a ravine. Since Matera was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993, was named the 2019 European Capital of Culture, and was the location for the 2021 James Bond film, No Time to Die. Its reputation among tourists from other countries has improved. Number 1. Castelluccio The Umbrian settlement of Castelluccio is one of the highest settlements in the Apennines. Castelluccio is a picturesque small town with just over 150 residents. You can enjoy breathtaking views both from the village and from the road that leads to it. The plains that surround the town are famous for the vibrant flowers that bloom every spring and cover the region in lentils, poppies, daisies, wild orchids, and more. The larger area that surrounds Castelluccio is dotted with small villages. The community is being rebuilt gradually and guests are now returning. The region is particularly well-liked between late June and mid-July. 
It then changes into the charming and enchanted scene known as Flowering of Castelluccio. Which part of Italy do you want to visit one day? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell for more of the world's best wonders.